Hello and welcome to our screencast for Feature IDE. In the following minutes we want to show you the changes we apply to Feature IDE to make it easier to debug your own project. So, let's see what we got here. This is an example for a feature diagram of an existing Feature IDE project. It's not that huge, but it fits to show you our changes. At first we want to create a constraint. The dialog is already known, but there are a few different changes. So you are not able to create constraints already existing in your feature model anymore. On the other hand, you are now able to create unsatisfiable constraints, tautologies or constraints that make the actual feature model void to allow you to create them first and changing the conditions later in the feature diagram. So, let's go on to the constraints. As you can see, I just created a constraint that makes our feature model void. It's highlighted with an error color and you can mouse over to get a tooltip for further information. Unsatisfiable constraints are shown in the same way, for causing a void model too. Just let me create some more constraints. All of these new constraints are not as proper as they seem, but because there is still an error in the constraints, the warnings are not shown. Now I delete the wrong constraint. As you can see, now the other constraints are showing a warning. Again, you can mouse over to get further information. This one causes a feature to be dead. This is a tautology. The next makes a feature false optional. And the last both are redundant, so you can delete one of them. A last thing that changed happens when selecting a constraint. You can now see the contained features highlighted in the feature model. Let's now proceed to the changes on features. In the new version of Feature IDE, you are able to see all relevant constraints for a feature just by selecting it. They will be highlighted in the feature diagram. Second, the visual for dead or false optional features caused by constraints changes to this cute red, so you can directly recognize where the bad features are. Last but not least, the hidden features got a new style, including their children. At last we applied a removing support for features. When you try to delete one that is still contained in constraints, you get an error dialog to prevent an inconsistent status. You are now forced to edit the relevant constraints first, before deleting the feature. Using the new function of deleting a feature including subfeatures, the dialog shows you a list of all features yet contained in constraints. Our next task was to implement the functionality to lay out the feature model in a more flexible way. There has been no possibility to change the static default layout, so features and constraints have been given a fixed position. Only the legend could be moved and features from the above to another feature. There were several layout algorithms implemented which set the positions of the features on the editor automatically. The problem was they couldn't be switched. We created a submenu in the context menu to solve this problem. See, you can select several layouts. These three top-down layouts were already implemented and can now be chosen. The first of them is a default layout. This is the second one, a more centered layout. And the third one, a kind of left align. At the top of the context submenu you can see the entry manual layout. Let's see what it's for. Features can now be moved freely all over the editor and aren't automatically set to a fixed position anymore. You can do that with constraints as well. Also, multiple selected features and constraints can be moved together. When creating new features, the initial positions are set relative to their connected features. If I create a feature below, it will be created right below that feature, if it has no other child features. If it already has a child feature, the new feature will be set right next to the most right feature at the last child. If I create a feature above, the new feature will show up between its new parent and its new child. Even if we select multiple features and want to create a new parent feature for them, the new feature will be centered between its new parent and its new child features. If I add a new constraint to the feature editor in manual layout mode, this constraint will be initialized right below the features if it's the first constraint, or right below the last constraint if one already exists. 
There is also a menu entry to lay out the constraints automatically below the features. So when you move the features or constraints away, they will be set back below the features automatically. Maybe you are too lazy to move the constraints manually. A special layout that we implemented is the last one that you can see on the submenu for layouts in the context menu. It doesn't lay out the features from top to down, but from left to right. This might have several advantages for many feature models, like a better overview. It's more compact in many cases. Features are ordered in vertical levels and are centered left to their child features. The manual layout and all its functions work for the vertical layout too. Moving features, constraints, adding new features, adding new constraints and so on. We also improved the auto layout function of the feature model legend. If there is room for the legend in any of the corners of an imagined rectangle around all features and constraints, the legend will be set to that corner with counterclockwise priority starting at the top right corner. You can see that there is some space left for the legend in the top right corner, so it will be placed there. If we set a feature to that corner, it would be intersect with the legend, so it's set to the top left and so on for the other two corners. If there's no room left in any of the corners, the legend will be placed automatically to its usual position, right next to the top left of the features. Our last addition is an option to hide hidden features from the editor. Better say, edit an option to display hidden features that is enabled by default. So when we uncheck that option, hidden features aren't shown anymore. If we set a feature as hidden, it won't show up, as well as all of its child features and their child features too. To save the changed layout persistently, we also added some attributes in the model XML file. The chosen layout is saved as a number in the added attribute chosen layout algorithm to the feature model entry. So when saving and reopening the model, it will look like it did before. When the menu layout is active, number is zero, the positions for each feature and constraints are saved. It's also saved if hidden features are shown or not. Now your possibilities to lay out features, constraints and the legend in the feature diagram editor are almost unlimited. Thank you for tuning in at our Feature IDE screencast.